You know, maybe I'm a little bit past just talking to a camera. It's fun. No, you know, there's always there's always room for it. So Israel invaded Palestine, if there is such a place. Um, I've been following this online. This guy named Harry Fear does a great Ustream show, or at least he was, unless his power got cut. I haven't checked today. And he's like in Gaza. And uh, my shoe is really getting ripped apart. Which sucks. I have this tendency to stand on my, my foot like this, so it like rips the rubber off right here. That sucks because winter's a coming, and I'm going to be stepping on the snow. Oh no! Um, yeah. Israel, basically, you know, Hamas, this Palestinian military organization, government, I don't know if, you know, whatever you want to call it, is uh, intermittently been firing rockets into Israel. Uh, Israel's been sending troops over the border into uh, the Gaza Strip, where the Palestinians inhabit. Um, it's kind of like a response to the rockets, then... They'll, they'll fire rockets in, and then the Palestinians, some time goes by, and they fire rockets back, and it's like, where did it begin? Where, uh, you know, where do you trace it back to? World War, the end of World War II, when they signed Israel into, well, 1947, uh, actually uh, November 29th, which is like the 65-year mark is coming up. It's the same day that the Palestinians are going to the UN to propose statehood to the General Council. God be with them. Form a state, my friends. At least you'll have some legitimacy in the eyes of the world. If you don't already, which you do. Now, so it's been going back and forth, but you, Israel just went nuts. They basically had it. It sounds like they have decided they're, 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 they're going to draft 75,000 troops to move in with a ground invasion. And um, they've already killed at least 20 people. Uh, with their bombers, I, I, you can watch live streams of like just the city skyline, and uh, you'll hear like just huge explosions. I didn't have actually seen one, but I've heard them on the live stream. So they got their bombers; they're firing their rockets. They're basically initially going for the rocket zones, the, the places where the Palestinians are firing these what are called Fajr rockets, F-A-J-R. They're these Iranian rockets, um, and they're going for the sites to blow up the rockets. I think the first concern is do not fire any more rockets into Israel. Okay? From a military standpoint, that makes perfect sense. So they go and they blow these up, but the problem is, you know, these Palestinians are like, they hide these rocket launch zones in like some dude's backyard. So Israel doesn't really give a shit about that. The government, the IAF, Israeli Armed Forces, I think, uh, they will bomb the dude's house and his backyard to blow up the rocket launch zone. Obviously, if you're going to blow it up, blow up everything around it. So they kill women and they kill little kids, but they get the rocket launching zones. Um, I've heard uh, reports that the Israeli, you know, what do you, I don't know what kind of force it is, it's the government, the counterterrorism ter ter force. They want to uh, cut out all the internet and things like that in Palestine or Gaza, whatever you want to call it, so that people can't like tweet and live stream what's happening because this is kind of, it's going to be like a sweeping hardcore brutal offensive in there like they're going to go massacre so many people and, and they don't want the world to see that I think is their plan so Anonymous went ahead and made some video where like don't you fucking touch them don't, or don't you touch the internet, you, you mess with the internet you mess with us and you've already we're already messing with you, basically they're like you're fucked Israel so I don't know what's going to come of that but that's kind of shysty. Like, if you're going to kill a bunch of people, at least let them stream it. So, you know, you, you have the world on your back. Um, I don't know where to begin. I'm not, a, I'm not an advocate of warfare to begin with. But, I mean, I can go on and on about how it's wrong that these Palestinians were displaced in the first place by whoever you want to call it, this council of, what was it, the UN, like when the UN was formed, like one of the first things they did was make Israel a state, pretty sure, and uh, you could call them Zionists, Zion is like the, the Holy Land, the, the Jewish Holy Land, it's the belief that like the Jewish people are their own people and they wouldn't like mix with everyone else, so there's like, the idea of Zionism is kind of like extremism in a way, like 
Judaism is not Zionism. Zionism is more of a elite, I think, belief structure. It depends on who you ask. Probably there's a lot of definitions of it. Einstein had, was. I saw. I just saw a quote earlier of him saying it would be horrible if the Israeli people, the Zionists, is actually I think what he said, ended up doing to the Palestinians what the Nazis did to the Jews. So, I, I don't advocate war, but to say that it shouldn't have happened is, is insane. It happened. Israel's formed. This is another reason why Mohammadjad's uh, statement about wiping them off the map, he's saying that it shouldn't have been formed. I get it. It was formed. It happened. Let's not worry about wiping out what already happened, because it already happened. We're not going to undo Israel. We're not going to turn that out of make it not a country. And if you ask the West Bank, like or the uh, Gaza, to become Palestine, you're basically asking the Israeli people that live there to no longer be Israeli or to be living in a foreign country. So it's a very tricky situation. Um, there's probably a lot of nationalist pride involved with all sides and religious fervor and feelings about it. I'm a little uh, independent. I'm, I'm kind of an outsider about it because I'm not there. So from the outside perspective, I think, why would Palestine not be a country? It's even a cool name for a country, Palestine. Great name. And it used to be, I believe, a country, if not a group of people that eventually would have their own country. I mean, I'm sitting behind a webcam in Brooklyn. I, there's not a lot I can do to, to ease the tensions. I know people can smell fear. I know that our, our being, our essence, causes a vibration and can change, relax the environment, if we're somehow able to involve tensions and relax them, then we've done something. I know that just thinking about it's changing it. So maybe if a lot of us can get together and be peaceful, then they will be peaceful and we'll find peace. You know, I'm not going to mock up a bunch of fervor uh, or favor. I'm not going to pretend to get angry about it right now because I'm just overwhelmed. Uh, I'm more interested to see what will happen. And if they're drafting thousands and thousands of troops, I have a feeling that there's going to be an invasion. I don't like it. I don't like it. So let's meditate on this. Let's really meditate on it. Let your heart flow. Open. If you need to open it yourself, go ahead and do that. This is what it would be like. Your heart's right here. And, uh... You know, it's okay to do it manually. That's why we're men, or women, because you manual, you know, your mans, your hands, mandibles, right? I don't know. But take it and open it up. Lift it. This, this ventricle that comes out of the bottom of your heart flushes into your stomach. Your heart will tense up if the shit in your stomach is too acidic and your heart's afraid of it, but you got to open it up. Open up your heart. Let it flow. Let the blood, when I say it, let it flow through your heart and up into your brain. Your neck will tense because it doesn't want this junk to go up into the brain. But you got to let it. Let it, and you'll find peace one way or another. Whether it be through death or life, you'll find peace. But if you hold it open, it'll learn to stay open on its own.